Welcome to our uh, NPTEL lectures on power quality improvement technique. Today we shall discuss about the PWM rectifier. This is one of the entrant of AC uh, to DC conversion. So, we know that we require to rectify it. Once we rectify it for the diode wheel rectifier or the control rectifier, then we inject also the harmonics. But we shall see that this is the property of the, let me allow me to change the color of the ink. So, properties of this uh, ideal rectifier. So, it is desired that a rectifier presents a resistive load to the AC power system that leads to one immunity power factor operation. Another is that AC line current has the same wave shape as the voltage since we know that I A C equal to V A C by R E. So, where R E can be said to be the emulated resistance. So, this is something what we want while you convert and you have the same equivalent though here you got an AC this is a voltage and this is a this is a current depending on the uh, magnitude of the resistance you just have a some kind of scaling. Here you will have a this value and this value. So, this has to have a some kind of analogy this is the voltage and this is the current. Now, so we require to establish an uh, since in AC average value is 0, so we have to talk about the RMS. So, average AC uh, DC power should be is equal to V square AC RMS by the equivalent resistive resistance or the effective resistance by V control and the power apparently consumed by R E is actually transferred to the rectifier DC output port. So, thereafter you got a DC voltage. To control the amount of the output power, it must be possible to adjust the value of R E, so that you can transfer the maximum power. So, this can be think of uh, we can uh, this is the AC current and the AC voltage and this one is a equivalent resistance and ultimately you are transferring power is equivalent to V AC square RE and here in this port it has a transformations you got AC output as well as uh, sorry you got a DC output and the DC current. So, we require to this is the output port model of rectifier or AC to DC conversion system. Ideal rectifier is lossless, we assume that switches are lossless and contains no internal energy storage. Hence, the instantaneous input power the AC power equal to the instantaneous output power. But there is a problem here generally it does not match then it would not be then AC because if you multiply uh, in phase component of the voltage and current then what will happen at the 0 crossing then you are your instantaneous AC power is 0 and thus you require to have a instantaneous DC power is also 0 and thus what essentially you will get is this not a pure DC the ripple DC. Since the instantaneous power is independent of the DC load, so we are not talking about since you know this is the expression of the power and there we do not talk about the loading of the DC portion. So, we can say that uh, 
since the instantaneous power is independent of the DC load characteristics, the output port obeys the power source characteristics and ultimately this power is given by V square AC by R E control or V instantaneous into I instantaneous equal to P instantaneous that is given by V square by AC by R E where R E is a voltage control resistance. So, equations of the ideal rectifier. Now, why we require it? Of course, we have discussed about the 6 pulse, 12 pulse converter. There we have seen the problem and we want a ideal rectification and see that how it can be achieved by the PWM rectifier. So, defining the equations of the ideal rectifier is that IAC equal to VAC by RD control. Similarly, that will be equal to Vt into It equal to Pt or Pt equal to this instantaneous value. Whereas, you know when connected with the resistive value, the input and the output RMS voltage and current are related as follows VRMS by SERMS equal to under root of R by RD. So, SERMS by RMS equal to under root by R by RD. This is the expressions. It is something like you know transformer kind of entities. So, we can we require to rectify. So, this is the rectifier uh, we are showing you a single phase model, but you know this is the effective DC to DC converter and thus it gives you the isolation for the sensitive load and also it ensures that voltage and current within the phase. So, it will ultimately you can see that at this moment it takes the VG. So, VG since with the absence of the capacitor we will have a profile like this and similarly IG also will try to maintain within the range of the value of the VG and thus this instantaneous multiplication of it, it matches and ultimately here in this side you get a ripple DC, but with the DC to DC converter you get a constant DC, but there is a power factor problem is solved because since voltage and current are in phase. So, there is no displacement power factor and all those other nasty element and it is also free for the harmonics. So, in that way you can mitigate by using a real rectifier the problem of the power quality arises because of the rectification process. So, that is what we say the control of the duty cycle of DC to DC converter such that output current is proportional to the input voltage that is essentially your as if it sees the resistive load. So, current and volt this is the voltage at this point and IG will follow this voltage just having the same thing with the less or more magnitude depending on the value of the RE. So, this is your uh, VG and this will be the IG. So, this DC to DC converter will force that IG here will be following the envelope of VG and thus in here you do not have any problem in power quality. So, this is the few waveforms. So, this is the input voltage which we have applied and we want that AC current should be like this Vm by effective resistance and for this reason I have drawn Vg in previous slide that this will be the value of the Vg and this will be the value of the Ig just by Re 
R e can be more than 1 or less than 1 depending on this magnitude of the I g will vary, but output voltage here will be a DC value and this will be your I DC that is also constant. So, what you require to do here, we have to maintain this duty cycle that is inverse to the voltage and current. So, that it follows this kind of pattern of voltage and current. This will automatically come, you need not have to do anything for the rectification. But DC to DC converter will force this current to be like this and ultimately, ultimately capacitor will ensure that your DC voltage after isolated DC to DC converter is this and for this reason your DC to DC converter will have this kind of modulation index. So, what is modulation index? MDT it is Vt by Vg, essentially this is constant and this is variable. So, it is quite uh, clear that once you are here, you require to, to generate this voltage, you require to have a more on time, whereas where you are here to generate this voltage, you require a less on time. So, in that way, this modulation index itself will be varying to give you this DC voltage and ultimately you will find that Ig is also following and thus this reflection will come into the input waveform and the, uh, this will be also a sinusoidal waveform. In that way, we can eliminate the problem of power factor as well as the THD in case of the, in, uh, in case of this uh, AC to DC conversion. So, thus what we can say? This is the averaged over switching period I t equal to V g into I t by V g. This is the unit template of the current. So, we can rewrite it as V g t by V r d. Similarly, I t equal to we can write in terms of the uh, we can multiply this too. So, V square by m r d sin square omega t and thus we can split. So, this part is DC that is V m square 2 V R d 1 minus cos 2 omega t that will have a double frequency ripple and average over the AC line period I will be V square m 2 V m R d. So, P will be equal to V square m by R d. So, ultimately this is your rectifier portion mind it there will not be any capacitor, capacitor will be at this and I g and V g has to follow that particular envelope which has been shown to you in uh, uh, which has been shown to you in our uh, previous slide and this capacitor has to maintain the DC bus voltage and in that way operation follows. So, the M d t equal to V t by V g equal to V by V m sin omega t and we will have this kind of modulation index. And thus these are the few issues to avoid distortion near the line voltage 0 crossing, the converter should be capable to produce uh, producing m d t approaching infinity. So, this is something we require to see that. So, for this reason we will restrict, these are the uh, logical restriction we require to put while designing. This above expression neglects converter dynamics because there will be a switching losses, there are filters, there will be losses, conduction losses, those are not featured in to the this calculations. We can use this DC to DC converter may be isolated as well as non isolated though I have shown the picture of the isolated. It can be boost, buck boost, chook, sepic and other converter with similar conversion ratios and that can be implemented 
or it can be used for this purpose. We will see that and this is the next topic of it in next slide that we will see that the boost converted exhibit lowest transistor stresses and that is is preferred. For this reason it is most chosen, but it is not that it is not possible to introduce this way of operations so that your power factor get corrected for buck, buck boost or the chuck converter. So, ultimately this is the overall circuit. I request the student to go through the one data sheet of the Texas instrument UC 385X, X can be 5556 five, so on. This is the data sheet for the uh, chip this controller that will ensure this power factor correction technique as well as the low THD. So, here operation is same we require to generate the VG, VG will be this and we require to force IG to be stained to the envelope just magnitude will change ultimately we will sense this VG and IG and get all those calculation done which has been shown into the previous slide. Then accordingly DC uh, duty cycle of this MOSFETs has been calculated, but please note that the MOSFET should have a, a body diet. So, another issue is that for the higher power rating we require IGBT and generally as you know that in it is a single phase application. So, it can be up to 3 kilowatt. So, this is the way of doing it because 220 volt in our cases India it is 220 volt and you got a 15 ampere line. So, you multiply straight away you get 3 kilowatt. So, this power factor technique can be extended up to 3 kilowatt and for this reason for the lower rating we can go for this MOSFETs and for the more than 2 kilowatt we generally prefer to go for the IGBT. So, DC motor voltage the peak of the input voltage the controller varies the duty cycle. So, this is the case DC output voltage in this case this one is more than the peak input voltage. Why it does not work you know uh, why you require to have boost phenomena? We require to uh, generate the rectified voltage generally what happen all to get up after rectification you will find that there is a capacitor. So, the current will not flow unless capacitor voltage is crossing. So, this is your rectified voltage current will flow only in this duration and for this reason you have a problem of the displacement power factor and the THD comes out. But in this case what happened you are shorting this switch. So, instantaneously your voltage this voltage get 0 and accordingly you build up the voltage and you ensure that you are keeping these values within the range with it of this of this the simulated value of the VG and IG. Thus, the controller varies the, the duty cycle necessary to make IG proportional to VG. 
Now, so there is a way of, to achieve it the variation of the duty cycle in a in case of the boost rectifier. This topology is called the boost rectifier. So, it is MDT, so that is V by Vg, V by Vm sin omega t. Since m is greater than 1 in the boost converter, it is required that V is greater than Vm. If the converter operates in CCM, that is in a continuous conduction mode, so that is what we want and if the low, uh, that is also a challenge, but if the load is light, then it does not work. So, then this value MBT will be equal to you know in case of the boost converter that is 1 by 1 minus D is the V0 by V in is 1 by 1 minus D. So, this has been replaced here and thus the duty ratio therefore, it will follow is that dt equal to 1 minus Vg by V, but it is for only continuous conduction mode and control is easy. And accordingly we require to design the rectifier and also this inductor so that it remains in a continuous conduction mode. So, this is the way we can calculate it. So, the inductor ripple is I g equal to V g d t into T s by L. This is the current ripple that you will allow inside the inductor. So, you know that that induct uh, this there is a boost topology thus current will go up, go up, go up, come down. So, the ripple what you have allowed assuming that it is a critical conduction mode, so it will always touch 0. And for that assumption we have this current ripple and for the low frequency or the this is called the average model the component of the inductor waveform is that is Vg is definitely it is given by Vg by R e that is the average value of I what the straight line I have drawn this this the average Vag. So, converter operates in CCM when I g of T s is greater than del I g t and that equal to d t and that is the limitations. So, that value is 2 L R e into T s where T s is the switching uh, inverse of the switching frequency or you can take f in numerator. So, substituting this value for the condition to be in this converter into the continuous conduction mode will be R e equal to 12 by T s 1 minus V g of T by V and that is for the continuous conduction mode. So, this is the condition for the continuous conduction mode or the if it is equal then it is a boundary condition. So, this is uh, we are now going to discuss realizations of a near ideal rectifier. So, R e is 12 by T s what we got 1 minus V g by V for the CCM mode. Note that Vg of t varies with time between 0 and Vm. Hence, these equations may be satisfied at some point of the AC line. So, AC line is basically you know you got a V and I. So, you can draw the value of the effective value of this Re. So, the converter operates in the 
CCM provided that this logic RE equivalent that is a load essentially you know uh, ultimately you know you should be knowing that load uh, so ultimately you know it is 5 kilowatt or 3 kilowatt and what is the current rating of it from there you can calculate the RE. So, this RE value should be uh, le uh, less than that 2L by TS. So, value of the inductor has a strong relation with the switching frequency. So, ultimately if you want that it is 20 ohm and you know let us consider that it should be uh, 2 milli henry. So, you can calculate this should be the switching frequency minimum required to operate whether which device will be suitable MOSFET or IGBT. And on the other hand the converter always operates in DCM mode that is uh, this uh, that is discontinuous conduction mode when RD if RD is more than this and thus what happened for this RD between these limits the converter operates in DCM VG near 0 and in the CCM when VG approaches to VM. So, it will have a transitions from continuous conduction mode to the discontinuous conduction mode, but thus that transition does not occur because you know that whatever the expressions of the duty cycle you write for this buck, boost, chook, sepik all are valid for the continuous conduction mode. The moment you are in a discontinuous conduction mode analysis become complicated. So, let us uh, think about the realization of the nearly ideal uh, rectifier with for with the power factor correction. A plot of the input current Ig versus the input voltage Vg for various cycle a various cycle dt in continuous conduction mode the boost converter equilibrium is Vg t by V equal to 1 minus dt. The input characteristics in DCM is found by the average DCM model that is shown in this figure. And this is the VG and ultimately this resistance has been modeled that is 2L d square by dt and this is the power available to you that is P t that is V minus V g and effectively since this is the voltage is available to you the control voltage and this is your DCM. Thus the in DCM R d from the, the previous is same as emulated by R d equal to V g by I g. So, now simplify this DCM in expression to obtain 2 L V T I G 1 minus V G by V equal to D T square D T V G by D T by V and thus DCM mode of the boundary in terms of V G and I G it will be 2 L V T S I G T equal to or greater than V g by V 1 minus V g by V. This will be the total expressions in case of the discontinuous conduction mode. So, this is the overall uh, pictures to analyze the boost rectifier. So, ultimately this is the circle within after this you can see that discontinuous conduction mode starts and this is your load line what I was trying to draw there. So, that is the IGT that is VG by RE 
you can see that if duty cycle is 0, so no questions if duty cycle is 0.2, you know this is the boundary for the continuous conduction and the discontinuous mode. In this mode, it is a discontinuous mode and where all those condition exists till this mode, you know you are in a discontinuous conduction mode and here this is your MGT that is that value will cross over. Similarly, if your uh, duty cycle is 0 0.4, your crossover will occur faster and ultimately you can since the value it is light load because this is a value of RE. So, you are this portion of it, it is the, the challenge is that it maintaining the this ideal characteristics of this rectifier the light load. So, from there you will take the continuous mode of conduction and when duty cycle is 0 0.6 you can take the almost follow the load line and this is the above load line. So, you will reach to the this continuous to conduction mode to the conduction mode faster. So, ultimately in DCM expression is pretty simple for the boost converter. So, uh, uh, so, so it will be Vg by V1 minus dt, but in case of the discontinuous conduction mode expressions is quite complex. So, it will be 2 L by V T S G T 1 minus V G by V that equal to D square V G by V and once it comes into the domain of the continuous conduction mode then 2 L by V T S into V G that is V G by V 1 minus V G by V. This is the way it should operate. Thank you for your attention. I will continue our my discussions on this rectification technique for single phase as well as three phase in our next class.